Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So I want to do a brief update here about state-backed crypto. This has been a idea that's been bandied about quite a bit lately, and uh, for the life of me, I cannot figure out why it's even being talked about. Honestly, it just doesn't make any sense to me. But we'll go through the article. Uh, let's jump over to the Bitcoin chart. Bitcoin is trying to blast through into new highs. You can see the most recent high was 61.51. We're hovering around 6100, just starting to drop off right now. So uh, again, that parabolic move is still in place. Uh, Going to have to go significantly higher in a short amount of time to maintain the parabola. Otherwise, we're going to get a big correction. So keep an eye on that. Now let's get over to this article here from Zero Hedge. This isn't the only article. There's been a million articles. Uh, I'm going to read some of this and then comment. This is from uh, Tho Bishop from the Mises Institute. Recently, Russia announced that it will be unleashing a crypto ruble just a week after Vladimir Putin strongly criticized Bitcoin and other private cryptocurrencies. When announcing the move, Minister of Communications Nikolay Nikoforov acknowledged that it was in part inspired by the aim of getting ahead of other governments. Quote, I confidently declare that we run crypto ruble for one simple reason. If we do not, then after two months, our neighbors in the your ASEC will. In doing so, Russia is following the lead of another country that too has become hostile to private crypto, China. Last July, the People's Bank of China became the first central bank to announce that it had developed a crypto prototype that it plans to offer alongside the traditional renminbi. That the first forays into state-backed cryptocurrency comes from two countries with a history of restricting a free and open internet is not surprising. While Bitcoin originated as a way to opt out of government control of money supply, increasingly governments see the underlying technology as a way to increase their control of the economy. As Zong Yu explains, Quote, for example, if the government plans to subsidize certain farms, say some corn farms, to support this sector of agriculture, they can directly add a certain amount of money to the wallets of some farms, for instance $100 million, and program this money to be sent to certain fertilizer merchants at a certain time, and that each can only spend a maximum of $10 million, etc., etc. So... <laughs> The question I ask here is this, let's look at this example. There are other examples, but in this example, what does this have to do with cryptocurrency? What is it about cryptocurrency that is any different than a bank account that can be assigned by the government? I just, I'm not seeing what they're talking about. And let's look at this quote here. Increasingly, governments see the underlying technology as a way to increase their control of the economy. What underlying technology? Bitcoin is a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer ledger. Obviously, if governments issue their own cryptocurrency, uh, I'm assuming that they would not have it be decentralized and I'm assuming it wouldn't be peer-to-peer -peer, and I'm assuming it wouldn't be li limited in supply. The, so the underlying technology of Bitcoin and most of the other good cryptocurrencies, the ones that are gaining in value like Bitcoin, they have a limited supply, they're peer-to-peer, -peer, and they're decentralized. So if government issues a cryptocurrency what is the reason that anyone would use it, number one? And number two, how is it any different than the system that we already have in place? So let's look at an infographic here. This is all of the money in the world in one chart. There is 1.2 quadrillion invested in derivatives alone. 
Ever wonder how much money there is in the world? The answer is complicated, which you might expect, but not because of the difficulty of tallying up the rather large numbers. Rather, it's more about which parameters are used to define money. The amount of money that exists changes depending on how we define it. The more abstract definition of money we use, the higher the number is. For purists who believe money refers only to currencies such as banknotes, coins, and money deposited in savings or checking accounts, the total is somewhere around $80.9 trillion. But for those preferring a broader interpretation, including digital currency, Bitcoin, above-ground gold supply, and funds invested in various financial products like derivatives, the amount is in the quadrillions. This is what a quadrillion looks like. Funds invested in derivatives alone total 1.2 quadrillion. In fact, there is more money in derivatives than in all the stock markets combined, which is comparatively paltry $70 trillion. The U.S. accounts for roughly half of the global market cap thanks to companies like Apple, Microsoft, Google. Investment in commercial real estate, often the most visible symbol of wealth, pales in comparison to stocks or derivatives as $7.6 trillion. As for money owed by every single person and the and country in the world, the grand total is $199 trillion. The U.S. is responsible for nearly one-third of that global debt, while Europe falls at 26%. Despite the attention Bitcoin has received in recent years as an alternative currency, it clearly has a long way to go. The value of all Bitcoin in circulation is estimated at $5 billion. <laughs> So that's a... 2016 article obviously we've come quite a way since then Worldcoin index shows Bitcoin now crossing the 100 billion dollar market cap so Bitcoin is uh, definitely the big player you can see that Ethereum is tapering off there was a point a while back where Ethereum was actually starting to challenge Bitcoin's market cap. You can see there's nothing now. So with the total crypto market cap at 172 billion, Bitcoin making up over 100 billion of that, uh, this is as skewed or the most skewed we've ever seen towards Bitcoin. But back to this uh, money issue. So the money that supply that I found as far as cash was 8%. Now, I didn't find a number for physical cash, for actual coins and notes. I'm assuming it would be much, much smaller. I, I would have to guess less than 1%. Uh, so here's the, the infographic here. You've got Bitcoin and silver here. And by the way, each of these squares is $100 billion. So you've got Bitcoin and silver, little tiny specs, uh, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, and Carlos Slim. You can see, could easily buy at this time all the Bitcoin or all the silver themselves uh, then you've got the big companies there Berkshire Microsoft Apple Alphabet Exxon the Fed's balance sheet is here uh, coins and banknotes that's the one I was looking for so you can see coins and banknotes is uh, very very small commercial real estate gold narrow money all stock markets broad money and uh, global debt and this big one here this is derivatives so the big question is if all of this money exists and it's not in cash it, it's it's and when I say cash I'm referring to notes uh, I'm, t I'm referring to bills and coins uh, I'm not referring to cash balances in your bank account because that's not really cash. That's a computer entry on the bank's balance sheet. So my guess is that at around 99% of all the wealth in the world, probably quite a bit more, of all the wealth in the world is a digital entry in some computer. So the question arises, if that's the case, then what benefit is there to go to another digital system that government-backed cryptos would be? Uh, 
they would obviously not uh, have decentralization, limited supply, peer-to-peer uh, -peer network. None of those things that Bitcoin has, they would have. So what's the benefit? We already have those systems. I, I can't figure out this canard. And, it, it, and the commenters on Zero Hedge are all saying... You know, as soon as the government issues its own cryptocurrency, then the existing cryptocurrencies will crash. Now, maybe the only thing that would be a benefit would be the ability to send and receive money. And maybe that's what they're talking about. We know that the bank wire is just ridiculously laborious, slow, it's so hard to send money. Uh, we have Mexicans, for example, in this country sending money back to Mexico, and they send it through um, the various services that do that. They take a huge cut uh, for those money services. And Bitcoin or any of the other cryptocurrencies take a virtually negligible cut. Um, so the current system that we have for sending money is completely broken. There's no question about that. But if they introduced a government-backed cryptocurrency that had some type of uh, efficiency, usability, uh, timeliness that's so missing, and also maybe security, uh, then that would be a benefit. But why can't they do that with the current system? Why is it so hard to wire money? So again, there's simply no reason to create a government-backed cryptocurrency except to fool people. And I don't think it's going to fool anyone. Uh, certainly not anyone who knows anything about cryptocurrencies. I don't see how they're going to be fooled. It doesn't appear that they're being fooled. Uh, Bitcoin is continuing with its network effect it, it just continues to grow uh, and I don't see any change on the horizon so let's jump over real quick here and take a look at the uh, alts now I have some alts that are actually holding steady uh, many of the alts are getting crushed if you have an altcoin that's holding steady, let's look at uh, percentage return. So even something that's just at zero, you know, like gain credits here. Obviously, then it's gaining with Bitcoin. It's gaining value. Even the ones that are losing a small percentage are gaining in value. And I showed you that chart yesterday from WorldCoin Index of flooring coin and how dollar-wise it's actually uh, still gaining value. So you have to keep in mind that something that even stays roughly even with Bitcoin is still earning money, it's still gaining value. But right now we're in the phase where everything's taking a big hit. You can see if we go to the USDT uh, section, um, Stellar, which uh, was really hot, is now down 21%. Ripple's down 6%. And again, these are in dollar terms. These are not against Bitcoin. So not only are these losing value against Bitcoin, but they're actually losing absolute value as well. You can see Bitcoin Cash is fading. Uh, so is Litecoin, Dash, the whole list. The only one that's green here is Bitcoin. Everything else is losing value absolute value because this is in dollar terms what does this mean well it to me it tells us that the whole idea of bitcoin being decentralized being out of government's control being limited in supply being a universal ledger being peer-to-peer -peer with many millions of nodes that cannot be shut down without shutting down the entire internet that's the value and that's why it's going up including its network effect being the main one that's why it's going up in value so I can't give you any reason why people would be fooled anybody knowing anything about cryptocurrencies would be, be would be fooled into using 
a government issued cryptocurrency. But if they issue their own cryptocurrency uh, and it gives you the ability to send in an efficient way, uh, I would consider using it. I, again, there's no reason for them to not be able to implement that right now with what they currently have. They're just not doing it. Uh, now, what are the odds of a state issuing a cryptocurrency that is actually a real cryptocurrency, one that is uh, limited in supply and is decentralized. I think the chance is zero of that happening. Um, and uh, it's possible, it, it's possible that a smaller state might do that. It's definitely a good idea if it was an open source, decentralized, peer-to-peer, government-sponsored cryptocurrency we haven't seen that yet but if that was uh, the case there's no question in my mind that it would explode in value and uh, the country would benefit tremendously especially if they link their taxes to it uh, but I don't know how you would go about implementing that it would be fascinating to see one of the smaller countries say such as Panama or some of these uh, other countries kind of free state project countries do something like that. Uh, as I said before, the horse is out of the barn with this thing. Uh, there's no putting the toothpaste back in the tube. I've said for the longest time, there's nothing they can do to stop cryptocurrencies. And this state-backed crypto, in my opinion, is just more FUD. It's just uh, to create fear, uncertainty, and doubt about cryptocurrencies, but I really don't think anyone's being fooled, and, and we can see that in the Bitcoin price, and we'll talk to you next time.